So the next means we're going to look at is restricting applicants for just the high quality deer, elk, or pronghorn hunts to applying for only one species per year. So the first thing we need to look at is how are we, what are we calling a high quality um, hunt in this state? The 2008 to 2017 Mule Deer Management Plan actually defined high, high quality hunts as hunts that typically have drawing odds of less than 10%. So we looked at that criterion. We also looked at current drawing odds for some of our trophy species, which have already some different application processes. For mountain goats, current drawing odds average 6.2%, and for Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep, they average 8%. So we took a stab at about 7.5% for drawing odds and shaved off all the mule deer and elk antlered hunts that have drawing odds of 7.5% or lower. And it turns out that about 38% of our antlered mule deer and elk controlled hunts currently have drawing odds of 7.5% or lower. We considered those hunts to be the high quality hunts for deer and elk in the state of Idaho. So then we looked again at how drawing odds might change if we restricted just hunters who were applying for those types of hunts to applying for just a single species, kind of like sheep hunters, goat hunters, moose hunters do right now. We can look at this a couple of different ways. Specifically, if you look at all mule deer hunts, again, like we've been looking at so far, the average, it doesn't really change it that much. You're only actually making this effect on a few of the hunts. Overall mule deer hunt odds go from 13.3% to 13.6%. However, if you look at how it actually affects those specific high quality mule deer hunts, that's where it gets a little more profound. You go from 4.2%, which is the average odds for those high quality mule deer hunts, to 5.6%. Now that's an increase of 1.4%. It doesn't really seem like very much, but 1.4% is about a third, again, increase over what it is currently, which is 4.2%. You don't have to make a big change when things are already kind of bad to make them a little bit better, basically. The same pattern holds true for all the elk hunts in this state. If you're looking at all the elk hunts, the change only goes from 11.7% to 13.8%, a change of about 2%. But for those high-quality elk hunts, you jump from 39 to 62 again, an increase of about 50 additional percent in your drawing odds for those high-quality elk hunts. So again, the trade-offs for this differ a little bit simply because you're only affecting a proportion of the hunters. It's got a relatively small effect on overall odds. That effect is greater on the specific hunts that you're affecting, those high-quality hunts. It only affects the hunters who desire a high-quality hunt. So other hunters aren't affected by this. They can still apply for multiple species. That's something that hunters have told us they desire. Because it's only affecting certain hunters, there's also a relatively smaller increase in fees that would be necessary to make this kind of a revenue neutral thing. And that fee increase could be isolated just to those high quality applicants. The total revenue loss of this method would be about $83,000. We'd have a couple ways to look at this. You could raise all control hunt application fees to $7.50. That's less than a dollar increase right now. Or you could raise the controlled hunt application fees just for those people who choose to put in for those high quality hunts to about $8. It would again limit some hunters ability to apply for those high quality hunts because they'd have to make that choice, that trade off, to apply for just that instead of also applying for that cow elk hunt or something. Mm -hmm.